Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Felipe W. Bryant. We'll be discussing his fantastic book, Initium, Self-Genesis of God, available for purchase through Amazon.com. And guys, listen, if you want to gather everything that Felipe has in store, everything that he has to offer, do yourself a favor and head directly to his personal site. Now, I'm going to list two sites for you, but they're both going to lead you to the same page, okay? And the first one is PrincipiaDivine.com or TrinityGenesis.com. Now, again, in terms of purchasing the book, keep in mind, you could, you got to go to Amazon.com for that. But you're definitely going to want to go to his personal site to gather everything that he has in store. PrincipiaDivine.com or TrinityGenesis.com. They'll lead you to the same place. Make sure you're heading on over there, okay? And I will say that Felipe was brought to our network, People of Distinction, by some of the best movers in the business. Author Reputation Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, well, make sure you're doing yourself the best gift that you can give yourself by contacting ARP. And you can find out more information on them at authorreputationpress.com. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Felipe, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction and thank you so much for being a guest. How are you? Thank you, Benji. It is an honor to be a guest here. I thank you, and I do thank you for all the reputation press because they they got me here <laughs> because they you know they really pushed and I said all right they were so persistent and I'm really thankful for this opportunity to convey this awesome book. I, I thank God. I mean I know I wrote it, but it's not it's not about me. It's about mm -hmm. what I realized, you know, about God, and it is a phenomenal book, you know. Nothing beats the Bible because the Bible, the King James Bible, that's the real book. But to lift this teaching out of the King James Bible is what gives it, what makes it truly authentic. And because everything is backed up with the King James Bible, and um, it is a glorious revelation of God. I really believe that, you know, you know, like we're all on a journey, and God is our ultimate destination, whether we realize it or not. We are going to be before Almighty God. And the, the thing is about God in his jealousy, he's revealing what he's really like, deeper knowledge about himself. And that's what initium really is about. And it's about the mysteries of divine origins. You know, in the back of our minds, we've always wondered what God was really like. You know, even before the beginning, I, at least I did. I had that, you know, I was, you wonder. Because, you know, if God, you know, if eternity is past, why did God even have a beginning? Why did he start the beginning, rather? And it turns out when you study the scriptures, you find out that God himself, aspects of himself, had a beginning. And people think it might be blasphemous, but it's there in the scriptures. You know, it's there when the Lord, you know, the Bible says that Jesus is the only begotten son of God. So, and there's many other scriptures as well. But the Bible says that he's the uh, firstborn of every creature. And that, that paradox, that divinity himself has, as the firstborn, is the firstborn begotten of the Father. This is a deeper revelation. But when you study the scripture, it, 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 the whole, the... Um, the Trinity, as we understand it, emerged from a deeper aspect of the Father, and the Bible bears this out. I would like to go into this, into it more, but it's in the book, thankfully. And but it is a glorious revelation. It's a glorious revelation because God is the true Rosetta Stone of all knowledge, and we've always known the knowledge, but it's been like fuzzy. And you know, but God wants to bring things. Truly to light, he wants to, it's like an unveiling. This book is like in a beginning of an unveiling of God. And everyone has to just, just, just behold the light because he is the true light. And, 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 you know, it's a fearful thing. 
and it's an awesome thing. And it is, it is, it is more than what I'm. I cannot hype this book because the hype behind it is, 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 is him, the ultimate reality. Absolutely. You know, and um, this is not initially where I wanted to go, but after hearing that answer, how could I go anywhere else? I, I want to ask a question really for my own curiosity here. And if we, if this goes too much into the book and we want to refrain from it, not a problem. We'll refrain from it. But my curiosity is going to get the best of me. And I have to ask you mentioned how God himself has an origin story, right? I mean, he started somewhere, man. Listen, that statement in and of itself is so profound and has so many layers and such a long rabbit hole that we can go down there and let's start, man. Let's jump down that rabbit hole. First and foremost, articulate what you mean by that and talk to our listening audience. What was God's starting point? Okay. Well, in Isaiah 43, God is very clear. He says, before me, there was no God formed, nor will there ever be after me. In other words, God's very clear to say that he has no beginning. See, there's disparate aspects in God. The Father is different from the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Father is more, he's more anatomically deluxe. He is the, the, he is the most high part of God. Okay, and in his sovereignty, he has decided to spawn the what's recognized as the Godhead. The Father, this aspect of the Father as articulated in Isaiah 43, 10, actually he, he, um, the biblical word for God is El. It's a very simple, just the most simplest, basic word for God in Hebrew, El. It simply means God. And this is the best way to describe him is his self-existence. Now we cannot even fathom what that is. <laughs> You know, but it's enough. We're able to basically understand where he is the cause of his own existence. I am that I am. That that sums it up. Now, out of that, out of who he really is. Now, this is beyond God's online attributes. Like omnipotence means all powerful. Omnipresence means you know everywhere. And then you look at the other omni attribute. You know, he's omniscient. <laughs> the three are my attributes. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent, and he's omnipotent, of course. Mm -hmm. And these emerge from his self existence. His self existence is totally, it's a different, it's beyond anything. And we don't even know what it is. It, it transcends form, function. Those ideas, those are nothing compared to even infinite. Is, is finite compared to the self-existence. The, the self-existence of God is not understood. It's, it's his real self of the Father. It's the innermost self of God. So that's what El is. That's what, it, that's what it represents. Okay. So when God says that in Isaiah 43.10, he's describing what he's really like. And then, but see, people cannot, you know, reconcile but I'll, I'll just give you the gist of itself. Genesis, that's fine, because it's articulated in the book. But I, I don't even re reference Isaiah 4310 in the book, because I just take too much things for granted and say, oh, every people going to know this doctrine. But, but in essence, he spawned the Godhead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which means he, he, in essence, he created an animate aspect of himself. Now, this is highlighted in James in the book of James uh, chapter one, where he says that with the father, there's neither variableness nor shadow of turning. Now those things are indicative of behavior. Variableness means potential behavior. See, there's an aspect of the father that doesn't have those aspects. And there's an aspect of the father that does. See what James said, in um, 117, I believe, it's, it's, that is paradoxical. And it just gives us a glimpse into the father. And the father has something else going on. Again, he's more anatomically deluxe. So before he did all that, 
this is this is the weirdest thing I've ever heard, but the, it, the scripture bears this out. The father, the self-existent father, L, what he did was he created, <laughs> they're ready. Everything occurred in this transcendent object. I have identified it as the Amai imperative. Now this Amai imperative, it's hard to understand, but all behavior, all change, uh, everything it, within God himself and the universe, it, this is God's crystal ball. It's the only way to describe this thing. Okay, and it's the innermost aspect of God. It's crystalline in its existence. It's it's manifest from L. Okay, and this online imperative informs the Council of the Trinity. The, again, this is in the scriptures. Okay, when in the Bible it talks about. I cited in the book. I had to make sure I, I had to uh, research this thing in the book and get as many scriptures as I could <laughs> to just to, just to show the reality of this. Mm-hmm. Now, this transcendent object, it's hard to understand. We don't understand how something has everything that happened in God himself and the universe. <laughs> so anyway, so this transcendent object, he's sharing He's measuring out this information, and it's being mirrored by the Son and the Holy Spirit. So this informs, this this crystal ball, it, it actually informs the Supreme Council of the Trinity. And it's a testament to the wisdom of the Father, but it's, he's just, just different. God's divine nature is unlike anything that we even understand, <laughs> because how can everything already happen? I'm, what I'm saying, for all eternity— it already happened, transpired in this, this anatomical word of God. And, mm. and the scripture bears us out, you know, when, you know, when the Bible talks about how wisdom was set up in the beginning, you know, this is the, you know, in a poetic scripture, but there's other, many other scriptures, thank God, I was able to bring that out in, in, the, in the book. But it's, it's really, it's, a, it's the most fascinating thing. Absolutely. So we have the self-existent background of God, and then we have this omni imperative. And then from there, God, the Father's not done yet because he had, he had created an animate, it emerged from it, from this crystalline thing, because even the Father behaviorally conforms to this crystalline object, the omni imperative. So his persona is manifest in himself. And this persona is able, he, by this persona, he's able to be, exhibit behavior because the, the self-existence of God transcends behavior of any kind. So it's like a stepping down from the Father in his divinity, his divine nature. And by this persona, he's able to later on converse with, you know, the, the Son and the Spirit. But the Father is, is the superiority of the Father is just, it's unparalleled, you know. Absolutely. You know, so this is, this is how the spawning of God, and you can see this, this can be inferred by the scriptures. It's amazing. And, you know, the Bible also says that we can go outside the, the Bible. The Bible tells us that the invisible qualities of God in Romans 1, 20, if we look objectively, look at nature, and we can see these transcendent, aspects of himself the invisible things of him are discernible from the things that are made even his eternal power in godhead so so that kind of so you can see from there after he after this crystalline object the online imperative then which is really like like it, it really even though i know about it i've researched it it still blows my mind just i mean <laughs> divine nature is just too much absolutely too much for the mind to grasp but it's enough for us to certainly fear. <laughs> but, you know, wow, I mean, God's like this? Okay. So, <laughs> so going forward, but you could see after, after the Omni uh, Imperative, he has a manifest persona, and this is the strongest behavioral aspect of God. 
Mm-hmm. It's, me- it's meta omnipotent in nature. It's beyond omnipotent as we understand it. It's beyond all powerful because the other members of the Godhead are not as strong as the father because he's, he, as a parent is superior to a child, let's say, in stature. So the father, this animate aspect of the father is stronger, you know, than just, just, just intrinsically superior to them. But, but each, per, each member of the Godhead has all of the Amma attributes of God. So it's, a, it's very, I mean, you know, we're talking about God here, so, you, so it's really, <laughs> it really is a mind job. Yeah, you. this is, Felipe, this stuff is incredible, man. I, I, I absolutely love everything that you're saying. You know, Felipe, one of the questions that I really want to ask here is we know that books written about God, books written about religion and the origins of God and religion by no means are new. Right. I mean, there's a lot of books that have been written about this. So I'm curious. I can, of course, speculate and I can assume. But you know what happens when you assume. And I'm not going to do that to you, Felipe. I have you here on the line. I'm just going to come right out and ask, man. In your opinion, what would you say separates your book from others in its category? What separates it is really two things. One that I've. I'm a born again Christian, which means I I just didn't look at the beacon of God's light from afar, because God is has a beauty that is beyond description. But I embrace Jesus Christ, so now by faith I understand that I have the beacon of His light in me, and that's the one thing. And then the second thing is, um, amongst all these Bibles, you know, so to speak. The King James Bible is the real book, the real word of God. And of course, you have to understand that the enemy, Satan, is also real. And he loves false doctrine. He thrives off a misinformation campaign about God. And I, I wrote that in the preface of the book. You know, and and that's what it's really, it really comes down to. They are trying to obscure the knowledge of the light by having guised forms of the deities and some pseudo theology Mm -hmm. and what that is designed to do is to obscure the truth and and as pushback from this i really believe this is providential because god is counterbalancing this now through this little work initium (laughs) it's little but it has huge implications and you know what you know what the thing is funny people in the world who are discerning are going to get this book they're going to grab this book for themselves. They're smart. They're, they're, they might even disavow some things in it, but they, you know, behind closed doors, they, they are going to read this. They said, wow, this is real. This is the real thing. Yeah. You know, because when you're looking for the truth, you eventually <laughs> going to show up. So God is, God has revealed himself here. And those two things, like I said, it is the King James Bible and more. And, and the fact that now it's, the fact that I'm saved, guy. In other words, I've, I've trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and this gives me the the insight that I can look. But God is will show Himself to anyone if someone is sincere before God. I, I was intrigued by God before I became a Christian. Uh, you know, I heard about God at St. John's University, and I was intrigued. So God is always working in the earth to reveal himself. He's happy to reveal himself to anyone. That's the beauty because that's what we are created for. I know why we were created. We were created to behold and worship and to adore the living God. You know, so it's just, it really is. (laughs) To borrow that uh, phrase from the matrix, you can't, you know, you can't, it's not something that you can really just talk about <laughs> what, you know, you have to take him in. And when, and Jesus Christ is real. I mean, the, of, of the King James Bible, you gotta, you gotta say that today because there's always these fake versions of Christ everywhere. You know, two people could be talking about Christ and, and someone could be in their mind, they'll think Jesus is a kangaroo. They've been told Jesus is a kangaroo. Oh yeah, I know about Jesus, you know. 
and it's it's crazy world out there. Again, but the enemy's tactic is to obscure the knowledge of the true knowledge of the light. Mm-hmm. And and God is going deeper. He's revealing himself deeper in initium. It's just it's just doctrine brought out from the scriptures. It's being brought out and even beyond initium, this this is evolving. So but initium is a great place to start. <laughs> So, you know, I, you know, yeah, I had, I had another hardback for the sake of vanity because people, because I, people, I know people just, they just want to say they have it, but that, that is vain. But anyway, (laughs) the best thing is the paperback because it costs the cost and the hardback, but the paperback, yeah. There you have it. And, and get it electronically. Absolutely, because you know, it's you know I, I'm old fashioned. I'm all for the paper paperback, so <laughs> that's my favorite. Listen, whether you get paperback, you get the 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 soft cover, you get it on Kindle. The bottom line that everybody needs to do is you guys, you gotta you gotta get the book. Okay, you you gotta get the book. Amazon.com is where you have to go. PrincipiaDivine.com, TrinityGenesis.com. Remember, they're gonna lead you to the same place, but you have to get you have to go there to gather more information on Initium, Self Genesis of God by Felipe W. Bryant. You surely will not be disappointed, guys. I absolutely loved this discussion today, and you know what I love even more? Is we're at the end of the interview now, and we have discussed so much information. And yet somehow we've barely scratched the surface. I mean, there's so much left to be discovered. And guys, when you pick up the book, I mean, after listening to Felipe talk, and obviously what we're discussing is very complex notions. The book itself is very short. It's only 92 pages. So it's going to be a quick read. You're going to gather so much information that's compact and found within the, the, the confines of the book. Listen, a great journey for you to embark upon a fantastic gift for you to get for someone else. You know what you have to do. Head on over there. Pick up your copy today. Let's grow. Let's develop. Let's educate ourselves. And it starts with this fantastic narrative. Felipe, this has been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. It was an honor, sir. Thank you, Benji, for realizing you see it already. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Thank you.